Welcome back to my YouTube channel. One of the most repeated questions that Jam normally brings up every single year is radioactivity. So I'm going to guide you through most of the likely questions you are going to see in this forthcoming Jam. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. The half-life of a radioactive element is 9 days. What fraction of atoms has decayed in 36 days? Option A, 1 over 16. Option B, 1 over 4. Option C, 1 over 2. Option D, 15 over 16. We must understand that half-life is the time taken for an atom to decay to half of its original value. For example, if you have the number of atoms in an element is what? Is 16 grams. And the half-life happens to be 4 years. So it means after 4 years, this atom is going to decay to half of its original value. That is n naught over what? 2. Right? Now going by this one, this becomes what? 8 grams. So if the atom continues again to have another half-life, they are going to have n naught over what? 4. Making the atom to decay to 4 grams. So that is what I mean by half-life. The time taken for this atom to decay to half of its original what? Value. But from the question, we are asked to calculate the fraction of the atom that have decayed after 36 days. So let me teach you how to solve this particular problem. Now from this question, our half-life, I will use T half to be half-life. It's given us 9 days, right? Then my time, small t, is giving us 36 what? Days. We are actually looking at the fraction of this atom that has decayed after 36 days. So we are actually looking for the fraction of n over what? n naught. That is what you are looking for. So the formula we are going to use to solve this problem is n over n naught is equals to 1 over 2 raised to the power of t over half life. Now looking for this fraction that has decayed. So let's go. n over n naught is equals to 1 over 2 raised to the power of, what's my time? 36 and my half life is what? 9. Now let's go. n over n naught is equals to 1 over 2 when 36 divided by 9 is going to give us what? 4. Right? So let's digress to get the fraction that we're actually looking for. n over n naught is equals to 1 raised to the power of 4 is going to give us what? 1. 2 into power of 4 is going to give us what? 16. Right? So this fraction we have now is actually the fraction that remain after decay. So this is fraction that remain or fraction remaining after what? After decay. But the question says, which fraction has decayed? So if actually that 1 over 6 was the action that was remaining, now which one has decayed? Because this 1 over 6 is actually a fraction, not a whole number. So for us to get the number of atoms or the fraction that has decayed after 36 days is n over n naught is equal to 1 minus 1 over what? 16. So this is going to give me 15 over what? 16. So if you have this type of question, I ask to calculate the fraction that has decayed. Anytime you hear decay, decay means when you get the one remaining because that is a fraction. You will not say 1 minus what you have because this is one remaining. So get the one that has decayed. Re Remember, when we are doing the half-life, I told you that if these atoms decay to half of its original value, it will reduce, right? The one that has decayed is gone. It has disintegrated. What you are going to see is the mass remaining. So that is how it is. So if you are asked to calculate the mass that have decayed mm -hmm. after disintegration, you are going to get the mass remaining first. Then because it's a fraction, you now say 1 minus whatever two you have. That becomes your fraction that have decayed. I hope that is clear. So from what we have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option D. A substance has a half-life of 3 minutes. After 6 minutes, the count rate was observed to be 400. What was its count rate at zero time? Option A, 200. Option B, 1,200. Option C, 1,600. Option D, 2,400. If you listen to this question closely, you realize that they gave us a half-life of three minutes. That is, 
the half life is equal to three minutes okay then after six minutes the time after six minutes is not half life so don't get it confused it's just our time after decay so that is t is giving us six minutes okay then the count rate was observed to be 400 that means that is after decay that is our n happens to be 400 what was its count rate at zero time you're looking for the count rate at zero time that is the original number of atoms before decay right now using our formula n over n naught is equals to one over two root of t over half life right so that's really what we have we have our n to be 400 all over n naught then is equals to 1 over 2 raised to the power of 6 over what 3 right now let's work it out we have 400 divided by n naught is equals to 1 over 2 6 divided by 3 is going to give me what? 2, right? So we get again by saying 400 over n naught. Then is equals to 1 raised to the power of 2 is going to give me 1. 2 raised to the power of 2 is going to give me what? 4, right? So because they're looking for the n naught, we say cross multiply. Now we have n naught multiplied by 1 is equals to 400 multiplied by what? 4. By the time you multiply, you're going to have what? N naught then is equals to 1,600. So our original number of atoms, that is, the count rate at zero time is 1,600. I hope you get it now. So from what you have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option C. A certain radioisotopes of uranium-235 and 92 emit four alpha particles and three beta particles. The mass number and the atomic number of the resulting elements respectively are option A, 219 and 87, option B, 84 and 223, option C, 223 and 87, option D, 219 and 81. Before we can get our mass number and atomic number, we have to write the equation on the board. Then uranium 235. Its mass atomic number of what? 92 emits. It says four alpha particles. So this is alpha particles. Mass number of four, atomic number of two. We have what? Four, right? Plus three beta particles. Beta is E. Mass number of zero. Atomic number of what? Minus one. So I have three, right? Okay, now plus the new element. We are asked to find the new element formed. This new element, I can call it P. Now, this is P. Then I'm asked to find the mass number and atomic number of this element. Let me say X and what? Y. I'm looking for the mass number and atomic number. Now, this equation must involve what? Energy. And this energy in quotes is what we call the binding energy. I hope that is clear. Now, for us to be able to solve this, we will ensure that the mass number of the reactant is equal to the mass numbers of the product so we can get the unknown which is what x so let's go we have 235 then this is equals to 4 times 4 is what 16 plus 3 times 0 is what 0 then plus what x do you understand now we are going to add this we say 235 is equals to 16 plus what x now you're looking for x which happens to be the mass number so x is equals to 235 minus what 16 that is going to give me 219 right that is for the mass number then for the atomic number i'm going to do the same by saying 92 which is this is equals to 4 times is going to give me 8 plus 3 times minus so is going to give me minus 3 plus 1, right? Now this is 92 is equal to 8. Plus times minus is minus 3 plus 1, all right? So we go again. 
92 is equals to 5, right? When you subtract, plus y. Okay? Now, y is equals to 92 minus what? 5. And it's going to give me 87. I hope that is clear. So from what you have gotten so far, my x is equals to 219 and my y is what? 87. That means the mass number is 219 and the atomic number is what? 87. So from what you have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option A. A radioactive isotope has a decay constant of 10 power minus 7 per second. The average life of the radioisotope is what? Option A, 6.93 times 10 to the power minus 6 seconds. Option B, 1.00 times 10 to the power minus 7 seconds. Option C, 1.00 times 10 to the power 7 seconds. Option D, 6.93 times 10 to the power 7 seconds. For us to solve this, you must remember that there is a relationship connecting the half-life and the k-constant. And that relationship is Half-life is equals to 0 0.693 over lambda. This lambda is the k constant, okay? Or we can say again that the k constant is equals to 0 0.693 over half-life. Now, from this question, we are giving the decay constant and we ask to find the half-life. So, we are going to use this particular one to solve, right? So, substituting into what we have, it's going to give us half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over my decay constant is giving us 10 power minus what? 7. Is that clear? Now, simply because this is the term, I don't actually need a calculator to do that. We are going to carry this minus 7 to the numerator. So, it's going to change from minus to plus. That is half-life is equal to 0 0.693 times 10 raised to the power of what? 7. Hope that it's clear. Now you're going to remove this minus 1 because this is the same thing as saying 6.93 times 10 raised to the power minus 1. That is this one, right? With standard form. Then multiply by 10 power what? 7. Now bringing it together is going to give us that half life is equal to 6.93 times 10 to the power of what? This is minus 1 plus what? 7. To give our final answer to be 6.93 times 10 to the power of what? 6 seconds. I hope that is clear. So if you have this type of a question, this is how you are going to solve it. From what you have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option A. A piece of radioactive material contains 10 power 20 atoms. If the half-life of the material is 20 seconds, the number of disintegrations in the first second is what? Option A, 3.47 times 10 to the power 18. Option B, 6.93 times 10 to the power 20. Option C, 3.47 times 10 to the power 20. Option D, 6.93 times 10 to the power 18. Now for us to solve this, we are looking for the number of disintegration per second. That is change in n over change in t is equals to lambda n okay now from this question the number of atoms is giving us the power of what 20 and we have the half life to be 20 seconds for us to get the lambda you must use this half life to get the lambda before you can put it here to look for the number of integration so let's go. We said that lambda is equal to 0 0.693 over half life. So let's go. Lambda is equal to 0 0.693 over the half life is what? 20. By the time you divide, it's going to give us 0 0.693 divided by 20. It's going to give us 0 0.03. 465 per second, right? Now we cannot put it here to get a number of integration. Now substituting into what we have, the n over the t is equal to, what's my lambda? My lambda is 0 
0.03465 multiplied by 10 power 20. Okay, then by the side you multiply, you're going to have the n over the t. If I want to change this to standard, so I'm going to have 3.465 times 10 raised to the power minus 2, then times 10 raised to the power what? 20, which is the same thing as 3.465. Times the raised power minus 2 plus 20, okay? Which will give rise to 3.465 times the raised power 18. This is the number of disintegration per second. Exactly. Now, if you have this type of question, this is how you are going to solve it. They give us half life, so it can help us get the decay constant. After that, we got our decay constant at 0.03465 per second, okay? Now, in answer to into what we have, we got our answer to be 3.465 raised power what? 18. Hope that is clear. So, from what you have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option A. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. May God bless you. If you are watching this channel for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notification button to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students are preparing for this forthcoming jam can see it and learn from it. I'll see you next time in the next one. Bye for now.